where is the mass of the atom concentrated? Which are the particles having mass in an atom? Yes, they are the protons and neutrons. So, the total number of protons and neutrons is called the mass number. Then what is the atomic number? Now, when we rub two particles together, which particles will be transferred or displaced? Is it the neutron or proton in the nucleus or the electrons around the shell? Which, is, which has greater possibility of displacement? It is the electron. So electrons can be displaced in an atom, but the number of protons does not change. So the protons are very important in an atom and a proton determines which atom it is. So atomic number is the number of protons present in an atom. Mass number we can represent it by A and atomic number we can represent it as Z. So mass number is the total number of protons and neutrons. Atomic number is the number of protons. We know that in an atom the number of protons are equal to the number of electrons. So the number of proton will be also equal to the number of electrons. Now if you know these two that is mass number and atomic number you can find the number of each subatomic particle. If you know the atomic number you can find the number of proton and number of electron. If you know the mass number and atomic number you can find the number of neutron. How? How will you find the number of neutron? If you know the mass number and atomic number, yes, neutrons is equal to mass number minus atomic number. Atomic number. How will you represent mass number? A. A minus atomic number Z. So you can find out the sub number of subatomic particles in an atom if you know the number, mass number and atomic number. Next, after finding all this, to draw the Bohr model of the atom, we should know how the electrons are arranged around the nucleus. We have already studied that the electrons are arranged in fixed paths called shells or orbits around the nucleus. How are these electrons arranged? So arrangement of electrons around the nucleus is called as electronic configuration. So what do we call it? We call it as electronic configuration. Arrangement of electrons in shells around the nucleus is called as electronic configuration. Which are the shells you have studied? Yes, we have studied K, L, M, N, O shells. Now we will see how electrons are given to each shell. Shell number, representation of the shell and electronic configuration. Electronic configuration. What is this electronic configuration? The arrangement of electrons or distribution of electrons in various shells is called as electronic configuration. The shells are K, L, M, N and O we have studied earlier. So now we will see how electrons are distributed in various shells. The electrons are distributed in various shells using the general formula 2n square where n represents the number of the shell. Let us write and see. Shell number 1, 2, 3, 4. What are they named or represented as? K, L, M, N, O etc. First shell that is K shell. How many electrons can be given to the K shell? 
we have to find out using the formula 2 into n square that is equal to shell number is n then it is 2 into 1 square 2 into 1 square 1 square is 1 so it is 1 into 2 2 now in the second shell l shell 2 into n is 2 2 into 2 square you get 2 2 is a 4 2 is a 8 now in the third shell 2 into 3 square what do you get 3 3 is a 9 9 2 is a 18 like this we can find the electronic configuration that is the arrangement of electrons in the shells around the nucleus after finding the electronic configuration we have to draw the Bohr model of the atom how will we draw the Bohr model of the atom let us see with an example how we can represent the symbol of an element by writing the atomic number and the mass number for example sodium atomic number is 11 mass number is 23 so what did I do I wrote the symbol of the element and I wrote the atomic number on the bottom left corner that is as a subscript then the mass number I wrote it on the top left corner as a superscript this is how I represent the symbol of an element now when such a symbol is got I can understand the atomic number mass number all that and I can draw the Bohr model of the atom now let us see atomic number atomic number how will we represent Z is equal to what is the atomic number 11 now mass number we represent it as A what is the mass number 23 now we must write the number of electrons protons and neutrons let us write number of protons is equal to atomic number that is equal to 11 we have also studied number of electrons are equal to the number of protons so that is also equal to 11 then what will be the number of neutrons number of neutrons will be equal to mass number minus atomic number that is equal to mass number is 23 atomic number is 11 23 minus 11 what do you get yes you get 12 so you got the number of neutrons also now we have got all the number of all subatomic particles now we have to find out the electronic configuration next what you have to write is electronic configuration electronic configuration let us see how many electrons are there there are 11 electrons if there are 11 electrons we have to distribute it into various shells we have studied that in the first shell it can accommodate only a maximum of two electrons k shell l shell it can accommodate eight electrons m shell it can accommodate 18 electrons we have studied and kept it there now let us see how we will distribute the electrons in the shells and we know filling of electrons takes place only in the increasing order of energy of shells k shell is having lesser energy than l shell then l shell is having lesser energy than m shell and m shell is having lesser energy than n shell that is when we move away from the nucleus the energy of the shell increases so filling of electrons takes place in the increasing order of energy of the shells so first which shell will be filled it is the k shell so let us see k shell 
how many electrons can be given to the k shell? 2 electrons. So, we gave 2 electrons to the k shell. After giving away 2 electrons, how many are remaining? Yes, 9 electrons are remaining. Now, we will go to the L shell. In the L shell maximum how many electrons can be accommodated? Maximum 8 electrons can be accommodated. Now, there is another rule that is the outermost shell of an atom cannot accommodate more than 8 electrons. So, the next electron must go to the next shell. The last electron can the last shell can accommodate only 8 electrons. So, 2 plus 8 you got 10. Again how many electrons are remaining? One more. That electron will go to the M shell. So, this is the electronic configuration of sodium. So, got the idea of electronic configuration? Now, how we uh, draw the Bohr model? To draw the Bohr model, first we have to draw the nucleus. Then we have to write the subatomic particles present in the nucleus. Which are the particles present in the nucleus? Protons and neutrons. How many protons are there? 11. So, we write P is equal to 11. Neutron N is equal to 12. So, we got the nucleus. After that, you have to look how many shells are there. It K, L and M shells are there. So, first I should draw K shell, then L shell, then M shell. You draw it using your compass. In the K shell, how many electrons are there? 2 electrons. 1, 2. In the L shell, how many electrons are there? 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And in the M shell, 1 electron is there. This is the Bohr model of the atom that is sodium. This is how we draw the Bohr model. So, if you get the atomic number and mass number, you can find the number of protons, electrons, neutrons. Then you can write the electronic configuration by distributing these electrons in different shells. And after that, you draw the nucleus and how many shells are there that you draw and then represent the electrons. This is the Bohr model of the atom. Now, we can complete this table. Let us see how to complete this table. Now, hydrogen. What is the atomic number? 1. What is the mass number? 1. What will be the number of proton? Number of proton will be equal to atomic number. We wrote it as 1. Electrons same as proton, we wrote it as 1. Neutron, mass number minus atomic number, that is 1 minus 1, you get 0. So, hydrogen is an atom which is not having any neutron in the nucleus. Now, we have to write the electronic configuration. How will we write the electronic configuration? How many electrons are there? 1. So, that one electron goes to the K shell. Now, helium. Helium atomic number is 2, mass number is 4, proton will be 2, electron also will be 2. Then how many neutrons are there? 4 minus 2, you get 2. Now we have to do the electronic configuration that is we have to distribute the electrons in the shells. So, K shell only 2 electrons are there that will go to the K shell there is no remaining electron to be given to the L shell. Now carbon atomic number is 6, mass number is 12, proton will be 6, electron will be 6 and neutron will be 12 minus 6 that is 6. So total electrons are 6. How will you distribute? K shell 2 electrons then in the L shell how much is remaining after 2? 4 electrons are remaining. This is how we write the electronic configuration of atoms if mass number and atomic number are given. In the same way after writing the electronic configuration 
you can draw the Bohr model of the atom. So try to complete this table and draw the Bohr model of all these atoms in your science diary.